Hi there everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy from the Nautilus Dry Docks again, and thank you for joining me. Now, uh, in today's video, I am going to be doing something by special request, and that is going to be showing you uh, how to do a quick and dirty bulkhead uh, in Google SketchUp for 3D printing for your model. Now, you'll have seen in a lot of my previous uh, builds and videos, I leverage 3D printing quite a bit, especially for, again, quick and dirty parts, uh, bulkheads, brackets, uh, hinges, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to do this. Now, don't worry, if you don't have a 3D printer of your own, there's services like um, shapeways.com that you can upload your file to and they will print it for you. So um, SketchUp is free and then uh, you can just get someone else to print it for you and you get a customized, perfectly fitted bulkhead for your boat. So let me show you just how easy it is to do this. Um, the drafting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna hope for just a few minutes. Bear with me, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make a uh, mock-up of your bulkhead. And you can do this out of paper, you can do it out of cardboard. Um, I happen to have a bulkhead for this latest build. Uh, it was made out of acrylic, but it's like a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's not very suited for what we're doing. And acrylic is uh, quite brittle as well. So don't like it, going to make it different. Um, what I did is I threw this in my uh, my printer uh, and it happens to have a scanner bed on it. Uh, if you don't have that, you can use your cell phone, um, simply take a picture of it, make sure that's perfectly flat and that you take a picture of it square on. Uh, and what you're going to end up doing is creating uh, a JPEG image, you know, throw it on your computer and that'll give you the profile that we are aiming for. So once you have that, let's see what we do. All right, this is uh, the interface for Google SketchUp. Uh, again, you can download this for free, a uh, free program. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the image that I scanned, uh, and this is it right here. I'm just gonna drop it in here, and uh, there you go. This is why I scanned it in, uh, in kind of black and white. Um, so what I want to do now uh, is I am going to just quickly draw a line from one corner to another and then I am going to rotate so that's shortcut Q uh, until it is level. So now our image is uh, level across. Uh, it is going to also be symmetrical. So the other thing I'm going to do, uh, I am going to, I'm just going to redraw that line really quick. And what that'll do is it will allow us to create a center point. So I'm going to select the image. I'm going to select the line. I'm going to hit M for move. And I see how it snaps right to that middle point. I'm going to put that on the origin. And again, it snapped. It's like snapped right there. So now the center of the circle for my watertight cylinder uh, is centered on my origin. I'm going to also change my camera view. I'm going to switch to parallel projection and a standard view of top. So this is square on right in the middle. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our um, bulkhead is sized correctly. So I'm going to go into uh, dimensions, click on my line, and you can see it's 5,089 millimeters. Um, what we are aiming for is not 5,089, it's 185 millimeters. So what we want to do, I'm going to uh, select everything, I'm going to hit S for scale, and we're going to pull this down until we get to the correct width, 185. And the other thing that I'm going to also do is um, go into model info and I'm just going to switch the precision to 
one decimal point. So you can see it's 185.2. I actually am gonna make this just a hair smaller because I find you get about a half a millimeter of expansion um, when you print it. So about 184 and a half. This is rough and you'll be doing some sanding um, when you do this. Now you can see that I've moved off my origin which is kind of a pain. So let's go back in here. We'll uh, select everything, control A, move, midpoint, onto the origin, boom! Now we have a correctly sized um, template for us to trace out using uh, the various tools. So I'm going to start with the uh, center circle. C for circle, I'm going to do a hundred sides. Um, so on the origin, and we're going to click right here. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to double check the dimensions of my circle. You can see that radius is 45, which is just about perfect because I've got a three and a half inch cylinder. It's 89 millimeters in diameter. This is going to be just slightly bigger than that. So perfect. I'm going to hit E for eraser. I don't need these dimensions anymore. I'm going to get rid of this center line. I'm going to get rid of this out part. So now we've got this lower part going on right here. Now I'm going to click on the arc tool in the top corner uh, on the edge. And uh, I'm going to go, you know, a little, just a little bit up here and I'm going to try and match up the outside to that template that we've got going on. Hit L for line, back to the middle. And I'm only going to go halfway, so I'm actually going to draw a line down in the middle. Now I've got half of it right here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm lazy. And I'm going to um, duplicate it, copy it, scale it off to the other side. Select that image. I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm going to use this offset tool. I'm going to click on the inside there. I'm going to offset this about two millimeters. So just hit two, enter. Now we're going to lighten this up a little bit because uh, we don't need all that thickness. I'm just going to put a couple circles uh, in here. You can do this however you want. Be creative, make it look cool. There we go. Very cool. I'm going to select those circles and get rid of them. There. So this is starting to look kind of like a like a bulkhead there, isn't it? Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that thing and I'm going to hit move. I'm also going to hit control, which is going to duplicate that. I'm going to pull it off to the side. S for scale. I'm going to go, oh, that's too, not too, too far. Move it off here a little bit more. There we go. Now hit M for move right on the inside. I'm going to match it up right there. I'm going to get rid of these duplicate lines. Now look at that. We have a bulkhead. Uh, this is for, uh, by the way, for a 96 scale scale ships Oscar II kit. Uh, just in case you are interested. So uh, we got a perfectly flat, like a piece of paper. Um, not very useful for us. Uh, I'm going to switch my camera view just because I think it's cooler to perspective view. There we go. Now we're going to use this extrude tool. Um, and this is one of the funnest things I think that you can do. I'm going to go on this middle section and you'll know that it's kind of contained when it turns uh, shaded like that. Click on it. I'm going to go up five millimeters. I'm going to hit five, hit enter. I've got this uh, inside piece. I'm going to go up one millimeter. One, hit enter. Same thing on the other side. One, oh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. So now it's pretty thin. Uh, it's only a millimeter thick uh, on that side. But what I am going to do is we're going to look at the bottom here. Um, this is blue. We don't want that. That means that's uh, supposed to be on the inside. So if you just right click on it and hit reverse face, it's going to turn the right color for us. 
So now I'm going to make it kind of symmetrical. So I'm going to take the same um, outside edge there. I'm going to go five down. And on this, I'm going to go down one. And on this, I'm going to go down one. So now we've got this 3D object that um, is basically uh, watertight that does not coming up with any errors there's no blue faces um, and it's going to be very uh, rigid but not a lot of material because we went so thin it's only two millimeters thin all around the outside here so with that done uh, I am going to select the whole thing go um, file export STL. Now export STL is actually an extension. If you don't have it, go into your extension warehouse uh, and just type in uh, STL right here and it will pull up uh, a list of extensions that will allow you to export STLs. I use the SketchUp version. I have great luck with it. Uh, you just click it, hit install and poof, ready to go. So let's do that again. I'm going to select everything, file, export, XTL. You get a little pop-up here. Uh, you can export only the current selection, or if you've got lots of parts, you could export it as a single file if you wanted to. Export, and then you just save it. Pick a name, save it where you want to put it. Uh, now, I've already done it earlier, so let me show you what the interface looks like. Um, to put that into my 3D printer interface. All right, uh, now this is going to vary by printer. You can use uh, Makerware, you can use Cura. Um, I am happen to be using a Dremel 3D printer, which I love, by the way. It's a great little printer. Um, really high quality, really fast, and has this awesome web interface. But um, basically, um, uploaded it into the program. You can see it's shot over. It's like hanging out, um, you know, off to the side here. It's out of the build thing. I got an error that it's out of the printer box. Um, I'm going to put it in the bed, center it. There you go. Um, it's in the middle. And I'm actually going to print it like this. Um, and the reason being, if I, this was to lay flat, um, all of this face, because it would be sitting up by that amount, two millimeters or so, um, would need supports and I would make for a really ugly part. But printing it like this, um, no supports, no rafting, nothing like that needed, um, it's good to go. So you can hit uh, export, save and slice, but at any rate it gives you options. Almost any printer will give you these three, main three options. The layer height, so how high of a resolution do you want? How many perimeters, so how many times the printer head goes around the outside before it fills the inside in. And what's the density? Is it hollow or is it not hollow? Um, in this particular case, when I printed it, I went to 0.3 millimeter uh, layer heights, which is basically um, quick and dirty. Um, I did uh, three perimeters and a 100% infill. So there's gonna be no voids in this, it'll be a solid plastic piece. No raft, no supports, and that's it. Hit save, and away you go. Let me go uh, show you what this looks like on the printer, and um, we'll be done. All right, here is my little uh, Dremel Digilab uh, 3D printer. Uh, this has been going for about four hours right now. It's got about an hour and a half left on printing. You can see I've got three bulkheads going on inside there. And the inside here is a little bit rough, but uh, you know, I did that uh, knowing that it was going to print like that. Um, a little bit of sandpaper will clean it right up. For a bulkhead, you do not need pretty, uh, you need functional. So this is the uh, printer printing away in a PLA plastic. Um, I know some of you are going to be like, PLA plastic isn't good for water. What are you doing? It's going to melt. It's going to fall apart. Uh, for all of you people um, that have read that, I call BS. Call me out on it. I don't care, but I'm telling you right now, it's a load of crock. 
Um, PLA plastic is perfectly fine for application in RRC submarines. If you were to put an untreated piece of PLA plastic in the water for like a year, it's going to break down. Um, our subs are in the water an hour, two hours, a month. Um, there is no problem with them whatsoever. Um, look it up, read it up. There's people who have done research, who have done experiments, and it's perfectly fine. So stop posting that PLA is bad in the water for our applications. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this real quick uh, and dirty tutorial. I know I was going a little bit fast, but I didn't want to get into really the nitty gritty uh, intimate details, but uh, you saw it from start to finish. It did not take long to pound out those bulkheads. Uh, if you were to try and fabricate those by hand out of plastic, you would never get um, that shape, that really cool, strong, thin shape. Um, and it would take you hours and hours and hours of fabrication to do it. In this particular case, I knocked out that file in uh, about five minutes, threw it over to the printer, and now I can go about the rest of my day uh, while the, ha the printer happily chugs out uh, my parts. It's the beauty of 3D printing. Definitely the future. Um, if you're not into 3D printing, I highly recommend it. Printers are cheap, printers are easy, uh, and they're tons and tons of fun. So, again, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocs.com. Thanks for joining me. Hope we'll catch you next time.